my life. Concrete, can you hear me? I can hear you, girl. Okay, we're live. Great. Yes. Woo. <laughs> hey, honey, what's going on? Hey, girl. What's going on? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy being off work Monday. Oh, look at you. You lucky. I see you. Girl, that's what that good government to do. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what's Monday? President's Day? Yes, honey. Shout out to uh, Barack Obama. Uh, Y'all get all the holidays off. I'm working in the wrong field. Girl, girl. And the type of weekend that I had, I needed the week. I need another uh, week, uh, to be honest. Uh, honey. Were you off all week? No, girl, I wish. I worked oh. all the way up till Friday. Uh, okay. <laughs> it has been a hell of a weekend. It has just been crazy. So oh, gosh. we're flooding down. And um, so yesterday, me and Carolyn are sitting around. We're chilling. And what, my neighbor comes and knocks on the door. And she's like, oh, my gosh, it's getting ready to flood. It's getting ready to flood. And I'm like. Girl, ain't nobody heard nothing about no damn flooding over here. And so she was like, well, they got the Red Cross around the corner. Um, all kind of fire trucks and shit. Mind wow. you, I had just came from that direction, didn't look in that direction, didn't even think about it. So mm -hmm. I happened to go back up there and everybody and their mama was there. Like, <laughs> So we oh. ended up spending the night at a hotel. Packed up. Um, I got half of my shit upstairs um, in my house. It is mm. crazy. As shit. Do you live by a body of water or something? Yeah, I live um, maybe about a mile and a half from a reservoir. Oh, okay, okay. And yeah. Do y'all typically have flooding? Well, I won't say we typically have it, but certain areas flood more than others. Now, over here, we don't really flood that much. Not, not since I've been over here. But okay. um, when I was, I would say back in 1979, I think the whole city was underwater. And, oh, okay. uh, that kind of warning, like they're telling people oh. to evacuate, all kinds of shit. Damn. But yeah, everything should be um, pretty cool now because um, good. Yeah, it's supposed to skip my little area, but my house sits on a hill, so to speak. So, and this oh, neighborhood okay. houses are kind of um, on a hill and stuff. So. We have we're a little safe. We're a little safe for now, but I'm too I'm post watch. So just in case we got a roll out, honey, I'm ready. Well, fingers crossed that it don't do no flooding in your area, child. Child, tell me. Ugh. So how was your weekend other than that though? Um, it was kind of interesting. I had got uh, a little pissy with Colin, so I go, I get off work, I go get my hair done. Oh Lord. We're supposed mm -hmm. to be supposed to meet. Um, we had a we were supposed to been double dating with um a couple of my friends here. Oh, we, okay. Yeah, honey. So we had reservations, all that good shit, and, and he comes to pick me up because I <laughs> don't be laughing in the comments. Um, uh, he comes to pick me up, and I'm like, okay. So have you taken your shower? Are you ready? What's up? He's like, nah, you you know, I ain't know what time we was going. I was like, nah, no, doggone well. I told him what time we gonna be supposed to be going to dinner. And I had about four hours of sleep the night before, so I was already like hella cranky and sleepy. And he was like, Well, um, he had got mad. He was sitting there looking at me crazy, like, I ain't come all this damn way for nothing. So he was like, We need to put on some clothes, get your shit together. And mm -hmm. we ended up going to one of my favorite restaurants. I think it's absolute. That's actually my favorite restaurant here, and we. It actually ended up being a great night. We have a lot of fun, so it turned out good. Turned out good. Oh, good. Uh, um. Well, yeah, you know, well, man, you, at least it still turned out to be a good night. I mean, you know, we brought maybe it was a little miscommunication or something, but at least it still turned out to be a dope night. <laughs> BMC said. <laughs> Then we go to Captain D. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. He tried it. <laughs> Captain D. Oh, my gosh. No, we didn't go to McDonald's this time. We went to Sonic's, and I'm so excited. I had a chili cheese coney, and 
<laughs> and Curly let me order the large tot. So it was <laughs> really, really oh, nice. splurge in there, huh? Girl, girl, mm. let me tell you about Sonic. They have the smoothie. No, not a smoothie. They have these um things with ice in it. And they put like real mm-hmm. strawberries in it. It was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> me, girl. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I seen a, a, a super cute picture. I was like, somebody looking snatched. Ciao. Uh, mm-hmm. we're out here. <laughs> it is <laughs> I seen you in your red. Yeah, child. You might have to get ready for the Valentine's Day, honey. It was I was like, don't hurt him, Danny. Child, I hurt myself trying to suck that damn good in. <laughs> <laughs> you look super yeah. cute, though. Thank you. Yeah, Carlin looks really nice, too. Yes, honey. Oh. Like a snack. Like a, like a full course meal, honey. It was, <laughs> it was really nice. I'm glad. That's really, really dope. Well, you know, we don't, we don't really celebrate around these parks, but, um, you know, we had a, 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 I had a, I've had a nice weekend nonetheless very 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 nice very nice let me shout out the folks in the chat honey they've been waiting they've been waiting girl i feel like black people i feel and shit like oh god (laughs) (laughs) hey cool man cool man um g survival survival g survival and ed been talking so much shit so i ain't even gonna speak to him Oh my gosh, Edward always talking stuff. No, I'm talking, you know, Ed. The uh, oh, Ed, Ed, Ed Landis. Yeah, hold on. Mm-hmm. Solomon, stop all that damn <laughs> young boy. <laughs> all right, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, he having fun over there, ain't he? Girl, Solomon, be talking <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> oh, girl, you know, they're gonna be like, oh, she was yelling at her. Oh, uh-huh, they like, listen to her. That's how black mamas do they sons. Hey, if, was, if he date a white woman, if he date a white woman, it's your fault for yelling at him. <laughs> yes. Hey, Edward <laughs> Bailey. Hey, NJ Prophet. Hey, BMT. Hey, Onyx Body. Hey, T3. Hey, Ask the Classy Black Man, Mr. Research. Hey, Bix G. Hey, D. Anderson. Yes, everybody's in the Hey, movie. Black people. Um, yeah, so about this topic, we're talking about some Black love today, honey. And I think this is a very apropos time, being that um, Valentine's Day just passed. And not that, you know, Valentine's Day is the only day that we should be reflecting on Black love or that we should be showing and displaying black love because we should be doing that 365. Um, however, and you know, I've heard things like February 13th is Black Love Day. I don't know if it's that official because I don't really see too many people talking about it, but I follow a lot of um, black pages. So I've heard them say things like February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day is actually Black Love Day. So. Mm regardless of if it is or it isn't. Um, Being that this is our first show after the Valentine holiday, we decided to talk about this today. And I think we should start off by defining what black love is. What you you think, Danny? Danny? Hello? Okay, well, maybe she stepped away for a second because I can't see her. Yeah, she's coming back in. Danny. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, she stepped away again. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure she'll be right back and we're going to define black love up in here. Uh, let's see if she said anything in the chat. No, she. Hmm. Okay. Maybe it's me, Danny, if you're trying to talk and you can hear me. I'm going to back out and come back in and see if we can get this thing on track.
Oh, shoot. I've been talking all this time and still had the thing on mute. Can y'all hear me? Put a one in the chat if y'all can hear me. Oh, shoot. No, cool man, cool man. We ain't got no cheap phone or service. Lord. Okay, so y'all can't hear me. Great, great, great. I'm just waiting on concrete to come back now. Okay. Yeah, honey, I uh, was trying to hit the volume and had did something and everything went nuts. So, oops, my bad, my bad. What's up, Mike B? Hey, D. Anderson. I'm waiting on concrete now. How was y'all's weekend? There go concrete. Concrete, there you go, honey. We hey, girl. <laughs> yeah, see, we live. Um, yeah, so we're going to try this thing again. That's round two. <laughs> see what it do. Did you hear the question I was asking? I was saying we should probably start by defining black love. No, but start us off. Um, well, my definition, and the reason that I wanted to start here is because as simple as it may sound, um, I'm, I see um, various different definitions of what black love is. So I think that for the purpose of this conversation, being that we're the host, it's important for us to define for um, our supporters um, what we believe black love to be so that you guys know what points we're speaking from. Um, for me personally, the, the basic premise of black love requires two black people. <laughs> so if you have a black person and a white person, a black person, and an Asian person, a black person and another, that's not black love to me. Um, you, you might have some interracial love, some Blasian love, some other type of love, but that's not black love. Um, black love requires two black people, two people who are of African descent from wherever, you know, in the globe. Um, so that's the, that's the basic premise, you know, what about you, man? Um, I was just going to say black love to me would be, uh, love between two black people. That's pretty much all I had. Yeah. I mean, and you know, that sounds basic, but I'm telling you not, you know, I've seen people who believe that as long as you have one black person, um, that it's considered a black relationship. And so therefore it could be defined as black love. But for me, that is not the case. That's, you know, that's not what I believe. Um, if you're with someone of another race, you know, kudos to you if you're happy and in the, you know, loving relationship with that person but you know sorry sis bro that ain't black love so because this is some stuff that i have it didn't have anything to do with this so to speak but it was, yeah and i just wanted to you know we'll go different places in the conversation i just wanted us to start there but go ahead then okay so um, do you think that a lot of black people are in love? Do you um, see a lot of black love where you where you are? Well, you should. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I see a lot of black lovers. I see, you know, a lot of relationship. I know that there is a common belief that um, you know people will say, "Oh, I went to a concert and it was nothing but black women." You know, I went to this or that and it was nothing but you know black women. They were solo. It wasn't no black men. So that is not my um, that has not been my experience. Um, I go out with my fiance quite regularly. And I see black couples, I see black families, I see, you know, black people who appear to be happy and in, you know, relationships. Um, so I do see it personally. Uh, I don't know why no one else, uh, why no one else sees it, but I personally do see it myself. So um, to answer your question, yep, I, I see examples of black love. I've seen examples of black love my entire life. I grew up seeing black love. I saw black love 
being displayed amongst my great grandmother and great grandfather, my grandfather and grandmother, my parents, um, aunts and uncles, I've seen displays of black love. I will get off into, um, we can have a conversation regarding the health of those relationships. Um, however, I can't, you know, can't deny that I've seen examples of black love. And, you know, we, we can go a little deeper into that in a little bit. What about you? Um, you know, it was so funny because um, when me and Curlin went out on Friday, we were we actually had kind of looked around and he was like, wow, we look couples. And um, then we look up and we saw um, some women uh, just kind of out eating and stuff. And it was funny because I was like, Obsidian would have a field day. <laughs> If he said, so you didn't see many couples? No, we actually saw more couples than we saw uh, women by themselves. Single. Okay, okay. But the the women, being there with some women by themselves, all I could think about was obsidian and dinner whores and stuff. And I was cracking up. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. sitting here on a field day with this. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know... I, you know, we go to regular places out to eat, regular restaurants as well. But you know, we go to listen to live. Oh God! Did the dinocracy get concrete? Okay, so let me just see what's going on in the chat. Um. She says, I know it's said he went to our Erica Badu concert and black women were single like him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of um, just single women out for Valentine's Day, but I did see a few. But normally, um, when Carmen and I do go out, we do usually see couples. Um, but then again, we are not we are going to Sonics and um, McDonald's and shit, so no, everything is real. I mean, see as their foot on her neck. Yeah, because <laughs> concrete shape disappeared. According to Men's Coke magazine, married men are healthier, wealthier, and have better sex lives. So, why aren't black women promoting how well marriage will be in their careers and quality of life? Ray Alexander, um, I absolutely, I, I think, uh, I think marriage is good for uh, both both sets, to be honest. I think marriage is good for both sets of people. So, yeah. What's up, Gab? Hey, Dwayne Smith. What's going on, bro? Concrete, you back. I'm sorry. You know what? I, I have these beats on and I didn't walk my happy tail away from my phone as if I'm you know, like this, like I'm on the cord of this phone or something and it disconnected me. So, my apologies. Girl, we thought the gynocracy had finally got you. No, way. the gynocracy ain't got me. <laughs> but um, I did have another subsequent question regarding black love. So we we we, we defined it for us. What black uh, we talked about our definition of black love. But what does black love look like? Like when you think of the term black love, like what does that look like when we talk about? I said, you know, I grew up seeing examples of black love, but what does that look like? What does it look like for you? And then I will um, tell you what it looks like for me. Um, it looks like a, a woman um, being very supportive of her man and her man being um, very protective of her and them raising their children. Um, it looks happy. It doesn't look um, it doesn't look stressful. It doesn't look like he's getting on her fucking nerves uh, when he comes to open a door for her. Um, it looks it looks good to me. I don't know. I've never really thought it, about it. Yeah, and, and it's kind of hard to put into fine. words. Right, right, right. Yeah, it is. Um, and I, I kind of agree. I, I think it looks like two people who seem to be happy or at bare minimum content with each other. It looks like chivalry being displayed for me. Him opening the door for her. 
holding his, you know, her coat or, you know, um, putting his coat around her. It looks like, you know, them holding hands, them l looking as if they're happy to be in each other's presence. Um, you know, it looks like, I'm, I'm a woman, so all of this stuff is probably too mushy for the fellas, but um, it looks like, you know, displays of affection, kissing, pecking, um, you know, her hugged up under him, smiling at him, her looking at him lovingly when he doesn't even notice and vice versa. That's what black love looks like like to me, um, you know, and of course we're, we don't go home with these people. So just on the outside, that's what it looks like to me when I think of black love. Do you think that like when you see couples that have been together for like 25, 30 years, um, do you really see the look like Nowadays, I don't think women stay in relationships <laughs> just to stay. But once upon a time, I think a lot of us would have stayed in relationships um, out of survival. What? Well, when I think about people who've been together 25 and 30 years, and I think about my own family, I mean, I have, uh, you know, intimate knowledge of the relationships and we're generally in intimate settings. So I might not see those longing, loving looks and gazes, but I see her catering to him, actually ensuring that she's fixed his plate, checking to see if he needs anything else. I see him, you know, ensuring that home is being taken care of, that he takes her car for oil changes, that, you know, um, you know everything is all right with the house. House, that he's making sure that the house is taken care of. So I have more the, the relationships that I know of that have been long lasting and or have lasted, you know, over 20 years are generally people that I know personally. So I have a little bit more, I'm generally in a more intimate setting as it relates to those relationships. So what about when Black love experiences problems like, um, Let's say uh, the woman wants to switch careers after 15 years. The man uh, doesn't want her to switch careers. Give me some examples, Concrete, because I don't really know. <laughs> um, I'll let me let me think of some, but I, I'll, I'll give you some example. examples. But I I do want to say that I, I, you know we we I'm not I'm not. Um, looking at love and relationships through this idyllic lens, I know that relationships have problems. So I am not by all by any means trying to pretend that they don't or that they're perfect on the outside or relationship goals and all that that type of stuff. Um, but for me, when you ask the question about when they have problems, to me, what makes a good strong relationship is how they resolve and work through those problems. I mean, just think about it. When you're first with somebody and you know, going through the honeymoon stage and there's no arguments the first six or eight months, everything is all peachy. It's when you get into the disagreements or, you know, once you start to learn what each other, you know, triggers are um, and how you work through conflict, you know, where you kind of build upon the foundation of your relationship and strengthen what you all have. So so um, working through those problems is part of what will create a good display of black love because learning to communicate with each other, learning the differences that each other has, um, you know, that's going to be pivotal in developing a strong relationship. Have you ever been in a relationship with a person, right? And while you were in a relationship, you really felt like you had like a whole lot of love for this person. Like you were in love with this person. Right. Mm -hmm. And then once the relationship ended, you have to kind of sit back and wonder like, damn, did I like when you, like when you moved on completely, um, do you feel like you, did you really truly love the person? Cause I've actually been through a situation where I, I was like, damn, did I really love this person. Cause I, I know what I love like right now. But did I really love yeah, well, a person? I don't even think about them anymore. You know what um, I mean? Well, for me, uh, I've been in those situations, but generally in like a puppy love type of situation where maybe I didn't really fully understand what love is and how love manifests itself. Um, you know, I I don't like use that word too lightly. I've been in relationships where I've grown to love people and I've been in relationships where the love naturally occurred. I've been in relationships where love developed from lust. Um, but like only 
kind of situations like those that you speak of that I've personally been in have been like the puppy love. Maybe we were young and I thought it was love. And then now that I look back on it, I'm like, I ain't even love it. You know, <laughs> I wasn't in love with him, I, you know, so. So what's your love that developed from the lustful relationships, right? Mm -hmm. About that. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that like, how was the attraction versus the attraction with other people? Like the other so, way, like where you learn with from the person. My own personal experience regarding that, it was, uh, you know, situation where um, the primary attractor was, you know, the phys physical appearance of the person, you know, and um, as a result, you know, there was a love situation that developed into what I believed was love or, you know, I can't live without him, you know, um, you know, my life won't be the same if you leave type of situation, but um, <laughs> it all stemmed from, you know, me, me lusting after that person. And it wasn't a um, relationship that lasted for an extended period of time. It ran its course rather quickly. And when I look back on it, I'm thankful that it did. Cause I'm like, I wouldn't want to be attached to that fool, you know, for an extended period of time. I'm glad that it's over and I had the experience and I learned and, um, you know, grew from it. Hmm. So they say this love talk is some girl stuff. Well, oh gosh. <laughs> well, let, let me let me say this, and then um, we can we can kind of take the conversation in another direction. So for me, the topic I wanted to talk about black love because I think that is important. We push enough of the ratchetry, enough of the dysfunction amongst black people, and we don't see enough of the love celebrated. Black love is a thing. We have to create our own hashtag in order to, um, you know, um, change the narrative around black relationships. We don't see enough of it. We don't talk about it enough. We don't display it enough. And we want to display healthy, happy love, successful relationships, how, what helps people People to sustain it you know even when you think about Gab he's been married to his wife for 20 plus years like the tips on how to sustain those relationships they may these conversations may not be popular but they're important for the survival of our community and that's why I personally wanted to talk about this topic um, mm -hmm. but you know we we can um, take the conversation in another direction or open it up you let me know what you want to do um, I'm actually, I really want to talk to the guys about their experiences with black love mm -hmm. or in love okay. in general. Um, I'm curious about their uh takes on it, so I'm really well, ready yeah. to open this thing. Let's, up. let's open it up because they 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 tired of us. They said we too mushy today. Uh, Valentine's Day is over, they only supposed to live through that once a year. What are we up here talking about, droning on about black love? <laughs> Girl, we, we should have added black bitches in front of it. Black bitches. <laughs> Girl, they would have been in the chat like, yes, exactly. <laughs> Encouraging us, child. Um, you know, I just don't think that it's enough of it. Like, I don't see enough of it. I am, I'm like a super, super empath and I love love. I love to see it displayed. I love to talk about it. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a mushy person. So this topic doesn't bother me, but I, 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 I'm not surprised that the fellas ain't feeling it. <laughs> What's up, Complex? How you doing? Who's not feeling it? <laughs> Some of these brothers up in here.